Beautiful. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris, and today on the Rock Metal Podcast, we have Amon. Is it Amon Sethus? Amon Sethus? Uh, more Amon Sethus. Amon Sethus, fantastic. And they have a new album called Part Zero. The Queen with yep. Golden Hair, released on December 12th via Wormhole Death Records. Right now, I'm being joined by Olivier to share some more information about their stellar release, as well as what the boys have got going on. So, Olivier, welcome to the show. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Well, hello. Thank you for having me on. Now, this is interesting, because usually bands start off with part one, but you guys are starting off with part zero, so it's like we're in the basement here. So talk to us about what the plan is. Are we going to have a part one, part two, part three? Is the whole career planned out? Um, actually, we, we formed the band in 2007, and we started recording part one, which is a prophecy, and it's already out since 11 years now. And then we recorded part two, which uh, was the final struggle out in 2014. And then we decided to create a kind of a prequel, mm -hmm. like Star Wars style. And uh, and that's why we wrote part zero, and it was about the beginning of the whole story we, we decided to, to tell. Okay. Now, as someone who's never written a prequel before, was that easy to do? Um, as I'm not in charge of writing the lyrics, uh, for me it was kind of easy because it, it, it didn't change anything regarding the, the guitar, but uh, the whole story was written... Uh, almost at the beginning by uh, Julien, who's the singer of the band. Mm -hmm. And so at the very beginning, I guess he already had a good idea of the whole story and uh, characters, stuff like that. So that's why I think it, it, it didn't look so different or so difficult for him to write the, the prequel. He had the idea. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Now you mentioned... Things really didn't change much for <clears throat> for you musically, at least on the guitar. So I guess my question then is, uh, what did you guys set out to do? Was it just another Amon Sethus record? Or did you guys set out to do something maybe a little bit different musically? Um, from a musical point of view, basically, what, what we've... Uh, at least what I've tried, because I'm not a professional, and uh, I've, we've always started from the lyrics or the theme of the song. So uh, I still try to stick the most possible to the story you want to tell. And was it different? Um, it was different because through, you know, almost 14 years of uh, the band history, uh, as human beings, we've just changed and evolved and my guitar playing has evolved. So. Uh, uh, I, I guess I, I was really willing to put some different stuff in that record, and I hope you can hear it the, if you compare with part one and two. Uh, and even if all the bands always saying that, uh, I, I honestly think that part zero is the, the best record we've done so far. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and I mentioned some evolution of your guitar playing. Um, what does that look like? At least from your perspective, what does that look like? You mean uh, evolution of my guitar playing? Yeah. What are you doing differently now? And is it just something different? Or have you, like, describe? Mm. Could you use the term evolution? So oh, that, yeah. 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 It's, let's say it's not more, like, technically, because uh, since the beginning, uh, I got married, I got two kids. And so practicing was a, <laughs> a lot different because uh, I almost had no time for it. But uh, <laughs> however, I, I was willing to, to write, you know, for some songs, I, I was really uh, trying to write something um, more brutal, for ex for example, for Mask of Brass. Uh, I, I've been almost searching for this riff for years. And uh, that, that's why I would say evolution is maybe I was more capable of uh, putting really what I have and, or what I want to hear in, in the music this time. Better than for the previous album. Yeah. Okay. So wives and children get in the way. I understand. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've been recording the, the part, part two. Uh, my, my first girl was just 
a few months old, and so she was standing uh, near me during some of the recording session, and still that's very good uh, memories for me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Now, I, in terms of the the record as a whole, you mentioned you know the story itself is easy. The lyrics are another story. Uh, you said Julien was in charge of uh, lyrics, but story wise, for anybody who is not familiar, what is the story? And I've I've got a little something up here from uh, Wormhole Death about the story. But from your perspective, Olivier, what what's going on in this album? Oh, in part zero, I would say. Uh, we are uh, kind of discovering the story of Queen Nitocris, uh, who will give birth to uh, the two main characters of following part one and two. So it's Isias and Ateravis. And it's uh, really the very beginning of the Amon City story. And it's from a different perspective because it's. It, all of this is based on the seventh dynasty of Egyptian pharaohs, which is kind of a historical period where we are almost not sure of anything. So that's why it's very easy to write something about it because you just can't have a book telling this story. And then it, on a different level, it speaks as well about different uh, Seems of day life. I would say that. Okay. Beautiful. Then there's a couple of videos that we have available. So in today's show notes, down below the episode, we have the band's website, amonsethis.bandcamp.com, where you can keep up to date with everything going on. And then we've got a couple of videos, Mask of Wrath and Osiris, God of the Dead, that are also available yep. in today's show notes. So I guess take us through these videos, I mean, I know Mask of Wrath is a lyric video, so that kind of speaks for itself. But I guess my question is, of all the tracks on the album, why Mask of Wrath? Um, because it's, I would say, the, the, um, one of the most, the most powerful track we have. And it's, uh, as we are kind of very huge fans of Symphonics, uh, to me it sounds a lot like, Symphonics, and I'm really proud of how it goes with very strong drums and and fast solos. So it was, you know, kind of uh, maybe a good choice because it's uh, kind of a short song and uh, very efficient. <laughs> Is it a vision song? Everybody, everybody. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it the? I'm not sure. Is that the correct English word for that? I'm doing my best. Yep. <laughs> it's oh, in French. In French, we say efficace, but um, um, it does the job. It's uh, it's good. You just want to headbang on it, and that's, that's what I meant with efficient. Mm -hmm. Well, the funny thing is, I was immediately thinking in terms. Well, what does that mean in metal, right? Because in dance music. The song is efficient when it gets people to dance and they don't want to leave the dance floor. Uh, you know, yeah. and that, there's a wide array of things there. You've got funk music, you've got R&B, you've got disco, um, EDM, you've got ABBA. I mean, there's so many things under that umbrella that, like, you know when the song is successful. In metal, how, when is the song successful? Is it when they don't leave to go to the bar? Is it, you know, when a mosh pit forms? Are you, are, do you guys have mosh pits? Are you guys the kind of band that has mosh pits? No, uh, I don't think. But if uh, just having people head banging, it's uh, that's what what we would call efficient for for our song of us. Yeah, beautiful. Now I'm listening to the track again, and one of the first things I notice is uh, going back to the guitar. I mean, the whole record sounds great. So we can talk about the production team uh, in a moment. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to focus on because you're the guitar player is this guitar tone and. As a compliment, I hope you take it as one. It reminds me of uh, Mark Jansen's guitar tone in Epica. Oh, um, uh, I would say so. Regarding production, you know, w once you're tracking guitars, uh, most of the time you have like a basic uh, distorted sound in the headphones, and you're recording everything, and then. 
uh, sound engineer is choosing the best guitar sound that will uh, match with uh, other instruments. And in our case, as we have as as well a lot of uh, orchestrations, mm -hmm. uh, it means that I, I didn't even choose uh, whatever material material will be used for uh, recording the guitars. Mm -hmm. This was just meant to to match with the whole orchestrations and drum and bass, fretless bass. Um, okay, which, which explains a few things. Because the funny thing is, the minute, the minute I heard it, uh, influences for the album are some bands obviously that I like. You see, Dream Theater, Symphony X, um, Evergrey, Queensrÿche. I, sounds a lot like. I mean, I'm saying that you're stealing from Epica. It just it sounds like Epica, which I think is great. But I mean, the orchestration is there, the riffs are there, the drums are there, the sounds are there. Um, did you? I see a lot of like progressive metal. Yeah, old, old ass progressive metal bands that aren't even relevant anymore. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Are, do you have guys have any like modern uh, symphonic metal bands in the repertoire that you guys listen to? Um, not that much, I would say, because <laughs> we're, we're not we're not twenty five. We're more around yeah. forty, <laughs> and so yeah, we 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 have much more references in from the nineties, last <laughs> century. <laughs> in the last century, baby. Yeah, I just yeah. recently started listening. I have to get into a mood. Like once every, I think, six or seven years, I'll listen to Dream Theater, which is kind of funny. Um, but lately I've been listening to Dream Theater again, and I'm like, man, this stuff is amazing. Why don't I listen more often? And I don't know. I just get into a mood where I listen to Dream Theater albums, and then I, I just stop. <laughs> but. Cool. All right. Mask of Wrath, a, a, a lyric video available. And then we've also got Osiris, God of the Dead, which is an official video clip. So not necessarily a music video, kind of more like a lyric video again. Yeah, because it's um, Osiris is uh, the third video we did. Basically, first one was the Blood Red Temple, and it was during first uh, lockdown. So we recorded this at home. And then we did a video clip a real one, which is uh, Desert Storm. And uh, you may see all uh, fireworks and stuff like that in the, in the video in YouTube, for instance. Okay, groovy. So if we go to the Amon Sethus YouTube channel, we'll be able to see that. Okay. Yeah. Groovy. Beautiful. All right. We'll put some links to those in the show notes. I'll go ahead and take care of that right now. While I'm taking care of that right now, for everybody who's listening in who wants to see what the boys look like when they're jamming out and there's like eight string basses and stuff. And it's like super uh, six string fret fretless bass. It's, yeah. It's, <laughs> Not eight. <laughs> it's crazy. It looks like a million strings from the from the video. Yeah. There's that dream theater influence, six string fretless bass. Um what else is there to chat about on this record? Because that kind of concludes my questions, Olivier. We chatted about the album being a prequel. We chatted about uh, the evolution musically, especially from part two into part zero. We chatted a bit about that Egyptian mythology that the story is based off of, as well as the record being released uh, in December of 2020 via Wormhole Death Records. So I guess my only other question would just be, what is the status from here? What's the plan from here? Um, so from here, we, we've been starting again uh, gigs. So that's kind of good for us. So we're playing tomorrow and then beginning of December and we have a lot more dates for next year. And uh, we already started composing because mostly because of band lineup uh, problems. We, it took us almost six years uh, to release a new album between part two and part zero. So uh, we, we are doing our best to release something new in let's say the next two years. And so we already have a lot of ideas, but we need to, to gather and, uh, and just play and check to write some new songs all together. Okay. Beautiful. 
All right, so everybody listening in, part zero of the Queen with Golden Hair, full album, out now via Wormhole Death Records, wherever it is that you consume music. And if you're listening in right now and you want to go into the show notes and just click some links, and there are some links to the band's website, amonsethis.bandcamp.com, as well as links to four videos that we just chatted about, Mask of Wrath, Osiris God of the Dead, Desert Storm, The Blood Red Temple, in today's show notes, the album, part zero, The Queen with Golden Hair, out wherever it is you consume music via Wormhole Death Records. Olivier, that concludes my questions. So thank you so much for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. You're welcome. Thanks a lot to you, especially for doing that, because it's always very nice for us to have some promotion of our music, and especially when it's overseas. So I, I can barely see you have a guitar at least mm-hmm. on your left I do. So you're playing as well i play the guitar baby and you're in a band are you no no the true story uh i was in a band several years ago and it didn't end very well like legal problems and oh. yeah so a few years ago i was like well i kind of feel like being in a band again but that sounds like just so I decided to start a podcast instead where I talk to bands and I still play on occasion, but I also have a wife and two kids. So, you know, I'm lucky if I can, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So some years I, I remember I've been playing only a few hours a year. So Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but otherwise, sometimes, like you, uh, I'm in the mood of re- just hearing some Dream Theater albums, even if I'm not fond of, of what they recently released. Uh, I'm still just astonished by, you know, images and words, Awake, A Change of Season. And these are really, really great albums. And uh, I still listen to them with a lot of pleasure. I don't know which album is your favorite from the from DT. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Uh, one of the I list, just listened to two recently, Metropolis Part Two, which oh, is yeah, it's huge. Yeah, which is which is huge. I don't like the story, but the way that they were able to put it all together is uh, remarkable. And as I was listening to it, I'm like, I'm uncomfortable again. Um, but musically it's, it's, it's great. And even lyrically how they tied the whole thing together was, uh, was great. And then there was one that I just listened to from 1997 and I'm trying to remember what it's called. And it's a very unique album because it wasn't, it was kind of more like, I don't know, R and B focused, but I'm trying to remember what it's called. Uh, Six degrees of inner turbulence. I'm not mm, sure if it meant no. dream or, uh, oh, uh, it's, um, Oh, Falling into Infinity? I believe so. Let me let me double check. I got their discography up yeah. right now. Oh. And I haven't listened to anything ever since Mike Portnoy left. I thought that was a dick move on their part. Same same for, <laughs> for me and almost <laughs> us in the band, yeah. And, and Mike Mangini is a great drum player. There's no doubt about this. But uh, from, yeah... Music and composition, I guess, Portnoy was bringing in a lot of stuff. And so, he, he, although either I'm too old or it, it got different, but I, I prefer the, the first one. Yeah. Falling Into Infinity, yeah. That one is a really oh, yeah. cool album. Oh, yeah. The solo from Hell's Kitchen at the end is uh, really huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today, Olivier. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, John, and have a nice day. 